Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Sherlock Holmes, Chapter 1. And in the last episode, guys, at John's behest, we decided to don a police uniform and masquerade as an officer to investigate the death of one Niccolo Detti, who is very dead here inside this safe. Now, he was discovered by the owner of the security company, um, Basilio Capello, and uh, we're just trying to figure out what exactly has happened. It looks like a burglary gone wrong, but we saw some evidence here on this table that gives us the impression that something else was going on here. So let's see if we can talk to... Let's see. Get some evidence. Do you know anything else about the dead body in the safe? Well, there is the rule of threes. You can survive three weeks without food, three days without water, three hours in harsh weather, and three minutes... Of you talking. ...without air. I'm sorry, did you say something? No, no, very enlightening, Mr. Lloyd. Thank you. I like Lloyd. Business affairs. Um, I don't know. Is this code memo still valid? Oh, yes. It's the same combination code everywhere. It corresponds to Mrs. Capello's birthday, actually. In fact, during this year's celebration, I was allowed a sip of champagne. That's when I had to dry my trousers, and then I had to... Okay, thank you, Billy. <laughs> yeah, let's not go too in-depth into that story. Oh, um, actually, no. Um, I don't know. Have you noticed anything different about Mrs. Capello recently? Mm, not really. She talks to me more when I start my shift. Probably because of the 100 Best Curry Recipes book I'm reading. Oh, and uh, we've been running out of paper a lot lately, so she often sends me out to buy more for her. She's very particular about the paper we use. Only one store on the island stocks it, and it's on the other side of the town. But I'm really fast. Interesting, thank you. The doggy. That would have been great had that been a uh, picture of Toby, which is the, I believe, the Basset Hound that's at Baker Street and all of the uh, other Sherlock Holmes games. Um, I don't know. What can you tell me about Mr. Capello? He's a good employer, but very focused on work and very serious about security, of course, since he employed a night watch of my calibre. Not everyone appreciates his strict business approach, though. Store clerks don't seem to last long in the office. Good to know. That seems to be all the evidence. This guy's getting a long exposure on this uh, picture. Now, is that everything here? Can we... Oh, there was an entirely different room. Never mind. Grand presentation from the famous Italian orchestra. Uh, August 14th, 1873. A concert program from seven years ago. An Augusta La Duccia is listed as a harpist in the orchestra. Oh yeah, the wife used to be a musician. Augusta, we do not have the time today for a chat because of my important client meeting, but I'm concerned about your desire to work such late hours. You seem happy about it, which is why I did not bring it up previously, but perhaps it is best that we have a conversation. I'm sure we can find a different arrangement. That's very formal for a husband and wife. Okay, what else we got here? Oh. Two theatre tickets for Shakespeare's Othello. The performance is tomorrow. <laughs> I have to respect the classics. How much you want to bet that the husband was not the uh, designated second party when it came to going to see that performance? Set of armor capello keys, lovely. Niccolo Detti, a young heir to the Detti family business, has returned to Cordona after 12 years of studying and working on the mainland. This coincides with Orazio Detti's departure to Italy, and hints at the possibility that Niccolo is intending to take over the family business in Cordona. We'll be watching the situation closely as it develops, and we'll endeavor to obtain a reaction from Basilio Capello. The Capello and Detti feud has been existent for over 200 years, and even though this acro... Oh, I've... I've Acrimony has been muted for the past few decades, some still remember the conflicts of the Gonzalo Detti and Vitellio Capello era. 
We are hoping that Niccolo's young mind and Basilio's calm business attitude may find common ground. It did <laughs> spoilers, it did not find common ground. Signor Capello, it has come to my attention that Niccolo Detti is soon to return to Cordona. We do not know what the means for the future what that means for the future of the Detti family, but Orazio or, yeah, Orazio? seems set on staying in Roma, so take that as you will. I wanted to strongly advise on behalf of the whole family that you avoid contact with Niccolo. We have no doubt that you will be able to retain your composure, even if revoked, but we do not know what the Deddies are planning. Be on your guard. The family reputation is at stake. In Baca a Lupo, Naldo Gilani. Lawyer's letter. This diary shows um, Basilio Capello's schedule planned weeks ahead. There are several noteworthy recent entries. First, a meeting with a detective from several weeks ago. And second, two dates labeled with the safe. Yesterday and today. Well-organized workplace. Mr. Capello is the best. Okay, this chap is seriously creepy. His teleportation is outstanding. Oh, can we go out here? Wait. Is there more evidence to... Do you know anything about these entries? No, but Mr. Capello is so well organized. I use a different method, very popular among the Buddhist monks. You create an attic in your mind and... I'm familiar. Keep it tidy, put only necessary information in, remove unnecessary information regularly. What? Oh, it's called an attic. You just stuff it with everything. You never know what might prove helpful someday. That is... Profoundly upsetting. <laughs> the funny thing is that um, attic in your mind is actually how Holmes did things in the books. Like Watson, I remember, makes a comment that there are certain things that Holmes actually has no knowledge of. Like astronomy and things of that nature because it's not useful to his work. If he learns something that he knows it's not going to be good for detective work, he literally does everything he can to just forget it. Lawyer's letter. Oh, um, actually, no. Do you know whose keys these are? Probably Mr. Capello's. Police took him so suddenly. I have the same set, but it's more efficient. Has fewer keys. So you don't have access to the entire office? No. Only Mr. and Mrs. Capello have the key to the back door. Do you know what this note might be about? I cannot presume to know another's mind, of course, but... I think Mr. and Mrs. Capello have been having some familial difficulties, mm. probably due to their lack of children. One of my oldest friends helps couples with their relationship troubles, and he always says... You don't have to continue. Oh, well, he says that to me as well, but I'm, I'm perfectly happy to. No, I insist. Tell you what, Billy would be a really good friend if you didn't talk much. <laughs> and I guess there's... We haven't made any. Is there anything in the mind palace? Oh no, that's this isn't even a mind palace case. All right. Um. And we still need to find out who this burglar is. All right. We're about to encounter someone. Already we're finding stuff. No signs of break-in. Very complex lock. Guess we'll just stick in predator vision. Kitty! Oh, lots of cats here. Railing dislodged and bent. Someone tried to superhero over it and it... How'd they land, though, is the question. A lockpick kit with a 4F. The letter F is inscribed within a four-leaf clover pattern. Pass muraille. Walk through walls in French. Our thief seems rather arrogant. Hmm. Wait, is there anything else that we may have missed here? 
Oh. A comprehensive set of lockpicks, recently cleaned with no fresh scratches. I say, I was like, we better take that. Okay, that's key evidence. And that's all evidence. So, lockpicks were discovered in the bushes behind the office. They were recently cleaned. Um, in a bag embroidered with the letter F inside a four-leaf clover pattern. And it looks like we have to look something up here. So where will we go for this? Don't know if City Hall would... Maybe... The uh, Chronicle may have... Um, articles on crimes, but if we're going to kind of go that option to see if there have been any more burglaries, let's go ahead and check the police station first, and if we don't find anything, we'll head down here to the Chronicle. I guess it's just kind of, you got to pick your poison. Do we, wait, do we need to go back and, do we need to go back and let him know about that stuff, about what we found? Well, no, other than the lockpick, we didn't really find anything else. Okay. Never mind. I'm sure Holmes is happy to be rid of that situation. Archives, archives. I keep on forgetting where the archives are. They are not there. There we go. So choose evidence. Burglary happening during the late evening. So that would be property crimes. Subjects. Definitely suspects. Evidence. Oh, instruments of crime. There you go, that should be everything. There was there... No, that looks like that works to me. Hey! Profile of uh, Felicia... Sevinge? I don't know how to pronounce that. Age 26, currently affiliated with the Backyard Boys Gang, acting as their master burglar. The Backyard Boys have a hideout on Clay Street in Central Miner's End. She has a distinct scar on her right cheek. Gives conflicting stories as to its origin, but has had it since at least the age of 18. After her parents died at sea and she wasted her inheritance, Felicia turned to crime. Has been arrested several times, but been cooperative with the law, lessening the severity of her punishments. So 26. Wow, so she's had that scar for at least eight, she's for eight years. And we have a location. Uh, maybe it would be wise to take a look around outside before we enter. Just a thought. It's a good thought, John. John has suggested I keep my ear to the ground when near the backyard boys hang out. This might help us with the undoubtedly dangerous encounter. Clay Street in Central Miner's End. Alright, back to Miner's End then. We had such a lovely occurrence there before. With the Hive Master and all that. Um, Actually, we can go ahead and take that out. Clay Street. Jade. Blue Copper. Clay Street. Okay, where was it on Clay Street? Oh, just on Clay Street somewhere. Well, it seems that Clay Street actually starts right here. So that actually might be our best bet to just travel up it. See what happens. We go all the way to the end, turn left, and then another left. And not run into any civilians.
probably another eavesdropping opportunity, I would assume. Turn left, and then this starts Clay Street. Looks like we have plenty of out. Oh, we do have some police officers here. Other gangs are planning an attack on the backyard, boys. The pipe is looking for information. The pipe, you say? Find out inform or find out what information the pipe wants and where to find him. Limping brass. John was right. It seems that the backyard boys have mobilized. Due to the botched robbery of Armor Capello by Felicia, they believe that another gang set them up and they're going to attack soon. I've overheard, however, that the Pipe, the limping information broker of the gang, is calling in his beggar informants. The Pipe can be found in the marketplace in Central Miner's End on Market Road. Okay, oh, I bet we have to try and look like, uh... One of those beggar informants. Let's go ahead and pin that. Do we have appropriate wardrobe? Street brawler, bohemian. No. All right. Well, let's um, head to the market, which is just directly ahead of us, and see if we can okay. find the appropriate garb. Before we start asking folk. If not, maybe the uh, worker. Buy some clothes and help me feed my family. Yes, ma'am. Step right up. Do you happen to have some beggar clothes on you? Merchant, wind coat, African casual, criminal. Uh, we could do criminal. Scatterbrained. Royal garments. Vagabond rags. Okay. Well, I assume that is probably accurate. We'll go ahead and purchase that since we've got money to blow. Anything? I didn't even see what that did. Mother's hat. Oh. Women's fez. Next time, be more careful with that stick. Square glasses. Chin curtain beard. Black eye makeup for instant street cred. That could work too. Fake bruises. Hold on. Let's, let's back out here real quick. What does the vagabond... What are we hunting for the... Uh, What does that give us? I see the green... The green marks there. Let's equip that. Um, maybe messy hair. Seems to do about the same. Yeah. Okay. Buy some clothes and help me feed my family. So who do we need to talk to? The pipe can be found. We said that he had a limp. So we need, do we need to go into detective mode? And I bet we do. Despising. Check the market. I think that might be our guy. And see, he's a little bit more British criminal, limp left leg, sympathetic. Okay. Hello. 
Hello, mister. I have some information for you. I'm not interested in the advice of a man like you. Move aside. I have places to be. What? The best of flea markets can offer. Oh, okay. Well, that's unfortunate. I made the pipe suspicious and lost my chance. Well, boo. I guess we didn't have the right stuff on. Um, we cannot change clothes here. Buy some clothes. Well, now that bugs me. Calling in beggar of beggar informants. Yeah. Help me feed my family. Ah well. Let's go for police uniform back again because we still have that other challenge from John. Don't want to be that guy. So I guess we're gonna have to track down this uh, base the old-fashioned way. Um, yes. Oh, new location backyard, boys. Well, that makes that easy. Don't know if this is the smartest option to, to go right in wearing a police uniform, but... Uh, no, it's not. I'm coming for you. Hey, buddies. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy, and then I'll... The party. I'll be right with you. Take a rest, my friend. Oh, that's unfortunate. Good lord. They are... Ah. Oh, so many shotguns! Oh my god! Oh! Oh dear! Roll! <laughs> roll! Roll, Sherlock, roll! You know, I bet since we didn't finish uh, John's challenge... That's why it's so difficult. Okay, can you guys... Dark Souls it. <laughs> Just Dark Souls it. At least get this guy. Get our health back up. Good. The snuff's ready. Okay, pocket sand is... Oh, no. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh, I gotcha. You didn't have your your face covered. Don't bother moving. You've locked. Give him the pepper snuff. Okay, are both these guys? Oh, might be a good time for the pocket sand. Gotcha. I don't know why the pocket sand did that, but discombobulated. Don't bother moving. You've lost. I'm coming for you. Yes, more knife people, please. Oh, you're still on fire too. Take a rest, my friend. The snuff's ready. That that stung. It's all yours now. Go for it. Too simple. Give him the pepper snuff. What's going on? Did something just explode? Okay, something just exploded. Fire extinguisher. Take a rest. The snuff's ready. Please tell me you're the boss of this. Against murder. What? 
Oh, are you kidding me? I shot him in the head face. But he had Okay. Okay, okay, I give up. I give up. Man, we are just disappointing John a lot during this uh case. I could have sworn I shot him in the faceplate. Well, the good news is we have Felicia. And here we are, Miss Sevigny. A Sevigny. place where we can talk about all your recent activities. We have a nice profile on you, you know. What are you talking about? I didn't do anything. Is there nothing you didn't do, Miss Sevigny? Thieve for the gang, break into the Armor Capello office, <coughs> kill Niccolo Detti? I... What? Kill? I didn't kill nobody. No, I... How... So you admit the rest. I suppose you won't mind explaining some things to me then. But first, let's get a profile. Get back on track here. Posh clothes, double-sided jacket. Ill-fitting too, so she probably stole those. Strange locket with a lockpick hidden inside. Looks like a rosary, too. Torn trouser. Cat claw marks on the leg. Okay. Uh, Felicia is a burglar and a thief in her mid-twenties. There are claw marks on her torn trouser leg from when she clumsily fled the scene of the crime at Armor Capello. She has a locket that conceals a lockpick. Her jacket is double-sided for a quick disguise. She's proud of her trade and is showing it off, but only to the trained eye. She has a locket that conceals a lockpick. Her jacket is double-sided. She is ready to vanish discreetly at the slightest alert, as if she were never here at all. Show off or prepared? Well, we saw that the lockpick, like, was all, like, um... It had leather work on it, you know, with like that 4F. So, or that four leaf clover with the F on it. So, I. She's proud of her trade and showing it off, but only to the trained eye. Prepared. I kind of want to go with show off. Show off seems to be the most appropriate one, considering the evidence that we found. Prepared is good too, especially with that strange locket with the lockpick hidden inside. Like, all of that stuff doesn't necessarily show a show-off, but someone who has a lot of contingencies. Hmm. You know, she may be arrogant, but that doesn't necessarily mean a show-off. I'm gonna go with prepared. See how that works. You were in the Armor Capello office yesterday evening, Miss Sevigny. The same place that Niccolo Detti was found dead today. What happened? How would you know? You can't prove anything? It's written all over you, Miss Sevigny. I presume you did not intend your evening to end with a fall over the railing and a fracas with felines. Need I continue? I... Oh, zut alors. It was just a job, nothing else. I was asked to come. Here, see for yourself. I don't know who hired me, but I think they wanted to pin the crime on me. Poor Niccolo. Oh. You knew Mr. Detti, how? Niccolo and I grew up together. I hadn't seen him in years, then ran into him on the street, smiling with some lovely lady on his arm. Can we have a description of that lovely lady? Because I think it's everything starting to fall into place here. And that was the last time you saw him alive? Wait, until I found him dead yesterday. That same woman was there, too. It can't be coincidence. You saw a woman in the office? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. She started screaming, so I slammed the safe door and ran when I saw a guard coming. When were you offered this job? Ah, oh, mon dieu. Um, I don't remember precisely. I, I think the letter arrived around 9.30 in the evening. It sounded tricky, but the money was good. And you arrived at the office? Perhaps 45 minutes later? I am very good, sir. I was in and out in five minutes. I don't like lies. No, no, wait. Um, okay. It took 15 minutes. All right? 
Still impressive, no? You know, I I think we probably it probably would have been best if we convinced or said that she, she was a show off since she was bragging about it. Your thieving days may well be over, Miss Sevigny. Until this matter is resolved, you will remain here. Good day. Five pieces of evidence upgraded or updated. Okay, so we need to seeing the woman who caught her at the office in a romantic setting with Niccolo Detti. So, what's happening here is that Augusta probably killed Niccolo and tried to pin the crime on uh, Felicia. But I guess we'll go ahead and figure that out in the next episode, guys. We're kind of running in. That was this kind of a disappointing one because we missed uh, talking to the pipe. It's probably one of the few times you could ever say you regret that. And, um... And accidentally shot that guy in the face, Pulp Fiction style. But it's alright. We will uh, persevere. If you guys liked the episode, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.